Dave, it looks like at your morning skate, you've, you've got some lineup changes up front. Uh, you know, Ennis coming in with, with Shore and, and uh, a few others. What What's your thought process on why you're making the changes? And does the back-to-back -back have anything to do with it? No, we're just looking for a spark. We've got some people that are... Uh... You know, just changing our changing our mix a little bit, see if we can get a spark. On the back end, uh, Nurse and Bear played a lot together. Barry and Kuko actually started the season together. Mm -hmm. uh, saw Barry miss some time on a power play. Is he banged up, or are you just making a change because you want more from your top pair? No, that was uh, we have a different look in the five on three, so we didn't start on that one, but he started the the other ones. Hi, Dave, um, you have uh, potentially Ryan McLeod and, and Zach Cassian uh, moving up, but there are two guys that didn't play a ton in, in game two, but what do you like uh, or what are you trying to get out of those two guys if you do move them up in the lineup tonight? It's like everybody else, trying to get a little more. We're around the game, but we're, uh, we need a little more. We need a little something to put us over the top. You think, you know, putting a guy who hasn't played a lot in, in I'm talking about in his NHL career in Ryan McLeod, that could be kind of a spark for, for your team uh, just to young guy coming in with uh, kind of oblivious to the whole thing, if, if I'm phrasing that correctly. I don't look at it as young guy, old guy. I look at it whether he can do the job or not. We feel like he can do the job for us. Reed Wilkins, 630 chat. Thanks, Sean. Dave, I mean, despite being down two games to nothing, how would you say your team has done in terms of being patient and, and poised? Because to me, it looks like they're they're sticking with a lot, a lot of good things and not panicking. Yeah, I mean, the games have been close. We're just we're just trying to, you know, they're close doesn't get you anything if you're if you're not winning games. So it's close. You got to find ways to find that little extra. But that being said, there's some things we like about our game. There's you know, there's there's parts of our game that are that are solid. But there's there's things that we got to try to get a little better, a little more, a little uh, extra play here or there to see if we can put ourselves over the top. Just specifically with uh, with Ennis, I mean, he's played I think a couple dozen games in the postseason, and he's a pretty veteran guy. What what do you think he specifically can can add if he's in there? Well, he's like you say, he's a veteran guy. He can make plays. He's quick. Ryan Rashog, TSN. Dave, you've gone to the taxi squad a few times this year and, and gotten really good results from guys that have, have been practicing with that group and maybe haven't played in a little bit. Does that give you, you know, it, is it easy, easier to make this amount of change when you've gotten the results you have off the taxi squad this year? Yeah, I mean, it, it does. I mean, we, we've kept our whole group pretty tight. There was a lot of interchange, like you say, through the year. So, you know, it's not it's not abnormal to make some changes in your lineup and just kind of structure things different from looking for a different look on certain situations. So, you know, I, I feel like our guys have done a great job of stay, staying with it. It's a unique year where normally you have 23 guys. This year we had closer to 30, but everybody stayed involved. And when they get their opportunity, they've jumped in and played well. You've done a good job defending. I mean, obviously a really low scoring series here. Is it, you know, are you able to generate more offense at the other end without giving up more in your own end is it a give and take or is there a solution to do both no good teams do both hey dave um, all season your hockey team has been patient they haven't chased the game they've kind of let the game come to them and and in, in tight games you've been able to to get the break or the goal that you needed when you're down to nothing, do you have to approach it the same way? Do you, is it tougher to stay patient when you're down to nothing, or do you have to kind of force the matter a little more than you would otherwise? Uh, every game, you go into every game, there's different field, different situations in every game that come along. You just, you got to do what you have to do to try to find a way to win. Sometimes that's being more patient. Sometimes that's pushing the envelope. That's that's just the, those are the swings that happen in a game that, the, the you know, the, every game dictates a different kind of nuance to it. And you have Chase on and Neil looks like maybe out of the lineup. Does that mean that Pugliari might be your net front presence on the power play now? Yeah, we got a couple guys that could play there, but Pugliari's played there this year quite a bit, so it's uh, that's an option for us. Mark Spector, Sportsnet. Uh, Dave, there's, you know, the other series going on around the league. I mean, they're all trying to play strong defense, too. You know that. Uh, but there's That's debatable. Old. That's debatable <laughs> watching some of them, but we'll, we'll, I'll take your word for it, Spector. 
okay, because there's lots of goals everywhere around the league, yeah. except for first series. Uh, this seems to be order specific. The teams that try to shut down McDavid and dry settle, they line up at the blue line and they really fold back the way the Jets are. Is this in, inevitably, is this not something your roster is going to have to figure out how to play against this? Because it's not the last time you're going to see it. Well, when you have, when you, I mean, every team gears towards the other team. We deal with it all year. I mean, every team that we play against, I guarantee you there's a conversation in there about Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Every single team you play. So it's not, uh, it's not anything new that we we haven't had seen before. But that being said, you got to find ways to get through it, get over it, and, and find ways to win. So last one for me. Do you, you know, this is a huge game. You got to win this game. We all know that. Uh, I every game, every you, game is a huge game. Sure, but this one's even huger. Do you, do you, <laughs> huger? Do you, right. <laughs> you don't have to remind your team of that. I know that. They realize where they're at. Do you coach? You know, like, what do you say to a team? Does, uh, in the movies, they come in and do a big Duke Rockby speech before you leave the ice. Do you coach more or less on that front? No, you, make, do you, you, need you, you make sure you, our team knows exactly where we are. We, we make sure we're prepared. And you... You know, you prepare your team to win. There's things that we can do better. There's things that we want to stay with. So it's it's like every other game. You you prepare your team to to try to win. Uh, but the players the players know that this is the playoffs. The players know what's at stake. So it's uh, you know it's not as if you change everything you're doing to one day and think you're you're you know you're just going to change the whole outlook of things. You you keep doing the things that have got you this way, this far. You keep coaching, you keep, you know, tweaking things to try to get you over the top, and that's what we do today. Last question, Jason Greger. Dave, we've seen three other coaches come out and pretty uh, ver verbally uh, disappointed with the officiating. Um, do you believe that if you come out and say something, does it help? Uh, you know, you've been around a long time. Do you find, like, you know, because two of the coaches are winning this series, and they said it, and one's losing. Does it matter, and do you find that it does impact at all in your history if, if you come out and land base the official? You know what? Emotions come into play with coaches and players after games, but I've seen it go both ways, to tell you the truth, where you you feel like you're on the wrong side of it and you you know you express your displeasure and it brings, brings uh, you know, it just brings it to light a little bit and other ways that you're, you know, coaches sometimes they – they do it to to uh, take some pressure off their team if you're not doing well. So there's I've seen it different both ways. It's just you got to remember there's lots of emotion in the game, and uh, sometimes that emotion runs over a little. Fair to say you'd like to see a few more penalties called. Like it's the lowest called series by a significant margin so far. No, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't have any complaints about the referees. There's been some calls that. Uh, our calls, there's been some, you know, I wouldn't say soft calls. There, there's, the refereeing has been an issue in our, in our series.